Hey, this is Presh Tollwalker. In this video, I will teach you a mysterious way to factor trinomials. Let's factor 12x squared plus 13x plus 3. This is a challenging problem because the coefficient on x squared is equal to 12, which is greater than 1. Let's consider the ways that two factors can multiply to be 12. We have three possibilities, 1 times 12, 2 times 6, and 3 times 4. These possibilities lead to three different ways that we could factor the trinomial. It will be tedious to check all of the different possibilities to figure out what is the correct way to factor the trinomial. But don't worry, there is a wonderful trick to solve this much quicker. I credit the video by Mr. H. Tutoring, where I learned the trick. So let's factor 12x squared plus 13x plus 3. We will take the coefficient on x squared and slide it over to the constant term 3. So we take 3 times this factor of 12. We now analyze a new quadratic, x squared plus 13x plus 36. How do we factor this? The coefficient on x squared is equal to 1. So we know this trinomial will factor as something like x plus some number times x plus another number. We are looking for two whole numbers that have a product that's equal to 36 and a sum that's equal to 13. Looking at the factors of 36, we consider all of the possibilities, and we see the possibility that works will be 4 times 9. 4 times 9 is equal to 36, and 4 plus 9 is equal to 13. So we can factor the trinomial as x plus 4 times x plus 9. But how do we get back to factoring the original trinomial? Notice we have slid the coefficient of 12. So now let's divide these numbers by 12. We have 4 divided by 12 and 9 divided by 12. 4 over 12 is equal to 1 over 3, and 9 over 12 is equal to 3 over 4. So we have x plus 1 over 3 times x plus 3 over 4. But we have one final step. We take this denominator and we will slide it back to the coefficient on x. We will do the same thing for the other factor. Slide this denominator of 4 to the front. We now have 3x plus 1 times 4x plus 3. And this is exactly how you factor the original trinomial. Wow! Let's do another example. Let's factor 10x squared minus 11x minus 6. The coefficient on x squared is equal to 10, so let's slide it over to the constant term. So we have 6 times 10, which is equal to 60. We then analyze the new quadratic, x squared minus 11x minus 60. The coefficient on x squared is equal to 1. The constant coefficient is minus 60. Since we have a minus 60, we will need one number that's positive and another number that's negative. So this quadratic will factor as x plus a number times x minus a number. So we need to look at the factors of 60. So we have two numbers that have a product equal to 60 and a difference between them of 11. Considering all the possibilities, the one that works is 4 times 15. The middle term is minus 11x, so we need to subtract the larger number. This means we factor this quadratic as x plus 4 times x minus 15. We now slid the coefficient of 10, so we need to divide these numbers by 10. So we have 4 over 10 and 15 over 10. Let's simplify the fractions. 4 over 10 is equal to 2 over 5, and 15 over 10 is equal to 3 over 2. So we have x plus 2 over 5 times x minus 3 over 2, and now we will slide back the denominator. So we take this 5 and bring it to the front, 
and we take this two and bring it to the front, and we end up with the factorization of 5x plus 2 times 2x minus 3. And that's how you factor the original quadratic. Amazing! Now let me present a related trick which can be used to solve quadratic equations. So instead of factoring the trinomial of the last example, let's set this trinomial equal to zero and say you need to solve for the roots of this quadratic equation. How do you do it? The method is sometimes taught as slide and divide. So we start out by sliding the coefficient on x squared. We take this factor of 10 and we multiply it by the constant term of 6. So we now have the related quadratic of x squared minus 11x minus 60 is equal to 0. We need to factor this quadratic. We just did this in the last example. We have x plus some number times x minus a number. We go through the factors of 60 and we see the factors that work are 4 and 15. So we have x plus 4 times x minus 15 and this is all equal to 0. So what are the roots of this quadratic equation? We know they are x is equal to minus 4 and x is equal to 15. How do we recover the roots of the original quadratic? We slid the factor of 10, so we now must divide by the factor of 10. So we have minus 4 over 10 and 15 over 10, and this leads us to the two roots of x is equal to minus 2 over 5 and x is equal to 3 over 2. And these are the roots of the original quadratic equation. Wonderful! The first time I saw these examples, I was in disbelief. We got to the right answers, but I didn't understand why these tricks work. So let me give a little bit of justification for why these mysterious tricks actually do work mathematically. Start with a general quadratic equation. ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to zero. We can solve for the roots of this equation using the quadratic formula. x is equal to the opposite of b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Now what happens if we slide this coefficient of a to the constant term c? We get a new quadratic equation, x squared plus bx plus ac is equal to zero. Using the coefficients of 1 on x squared, b on x, and ac as the constant term, we can solve for the roots as big x is equal to the opposite of b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2. Now let's compare these two formulas. Notice the numerators are identical. They only differ in the denominator by a factor of a. In other words, the roots of the original quadratic equation are just the roots of this new quadratic equation divided by the factor of a. So that's why the slide and divide method works. Here's another way to see it. Starting with the general quadratic equation, multiply both sides by a. Now let's make the substitution that little x is equal to capital X divided by a. If we make this substitution and then simplify, we get the quadratic equation big x squared plus b times big x plus ac is equal to zero. And this is exactly what would happen if we slid the coefficient of a to the constant term c. So, since we made the substitution that little x is equal to big x divided by a, we can see the roots of the two quadratics only differ by a factor of 1 over a. So this explains the slide and divide method for finding roots. But why does it work for factoring trinomials? Let's do an example. Let's factor 12x squared plus 13x plus 3. The first step in the trick is to slide the coefficient of 12 to the constant term of 3. 3 times 12 is equal to 36. So we have the new quadratic x squared plus 13x plus 36. In order to factor this trinomial, 
let's create a quadratic equation and let's solve for the two roots. So we can easily factor this trinomial as x plus four times x plus nine is equal to zero. This gives the two roots of the quadratic equation of x is equal to minus four and minus nine. By the slide and divide trick, which we just justified, we know that if we have the equation 12x squared plus 13x plus three is equal to zero, the roots of this equation will be the roots we've just derived divided by this factor we've slid. So the roots of this quadratic equation will be equal to minus four over 12 and minus nine over 12. This simplifies to be minus one over three and minus three over four. So from these roots, we could factor a quadratic equation which has the same roots as x plus one over three times x plus three over four is equal to zero. So this quadratic equation has the same roots, but it's off by a factor of 12. We need this coefficient to be 12. So how do we account for that? We multiply both sides of the equation by this coefficient of 12. Zero times 12 is equal to zero, so this vanishes. Now, how do we move these denominators over? Well, notice that 12 is equal to three times four. So we will move a factor of three to this first linear term, and we will move a factor of four to the second linear term. So this 12 will get distributed through in a way where we multiply x plus one over three times three, and x plus three over four times four. This exactly has the same effect of moving this denominator over to the front. So we do this for both of these linear factors, and we end up factoring the trinomial as three x plus one times four x plus three. And that's why this wonderful trick works. Wow. Thanks for making us one of the best communities on YouTube. See you next episode of Mind Your Decisions, where we solve the world's problems one video at a time.